Hey, you are all welcomed, and I'm looking forward uh, to us having great time in the presence of God. It's better for you to allow Holy Spirit to guide and teach you. You are all welcomed, uh, sons of Mount Horeb, uh, members of your families, and then colleagues and neighbors, and then, of course, and, and all those who are in, in, in essential services. Let us do our profession. One, two, three. I found first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things I added to me. I believe in Jesus Christ. And signs and wonders are following me. Surely, goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Hey, we will do our procedure manual. One, two, three. This book of the law shall not depart from my mouth, but I shall meditate in it day and night, that I may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then I will have, I will make my way prosperous, and then I will have good success. This is the book. This is the book. This is the book. The Bible is the book of the law. Uh, our season 2020 2021 let's declare it one two three this is my season of faith exploits and divine adventures where impossibilities are transformed into possibilities through the faith of the son of god we are getting into a new series and i believe that as we travel this journey together we will benefit from it and we will enjoy God's involvement in our lives. It is entitled Steps Divinely Ordered. Steps Divinely Ordered. God was, wants to order your steps. God wants to be a part of the details of your life. Psalms 37 verse 23 through 25. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and God delights in his way. God delights in his way because he is the one who has ordered his steps. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord and God delights in his way. Verse 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Why? Because his steps are ordered by God. Even though he falls, he shall not or she shall not be utterly destroyed. For you not to be utterly destroyed, your steps must be ordered by God. So divinely ordered by God, if God divinely orders your steps, even if it happens that you fall, you will not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. God will support you, will uphold you with his hand. Verse 25 says, David putting up or, 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 or declaring a testimony. I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his descended begging for bread. The righteous forsaken, which righteous? The righteous whose steps are ordered by God. You see, if you take that portion of scripture into context, you will realize that here, David was talking about people whose steps were ordered by God. Because, verse 23 says, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. And then, verse 25, David puts up a testimony. And he says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Which righteous? The righteous whose steps are ordered by God. Allow God to order your steps. And it says his descendant or her descendant will not be begging for bread. You will never give birth to beggars. Your children will never be beggars. Why? Because the parents' steps have been ordered by God. If God orders your step, you will never beg for bread because it is impossible to, uh, to beg for what is yours. You own the bakery. You own the bakery. If God orders your steps, automatically you begin you become a baker. You you own you own the bakery. You have so much bread that you will never at any point in time find yourself begging for bread. Why? You own the bakery. 
Psalms 37 verse 4 and 5 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you delight yourself in the Lord, if you have confidence in the Lord, and you are excited about the Lord, you are zealous about the Lord, you are, you are enthusiastic about the Lord, you serve the Lord with joy. Yeah, the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you delight yourself in the Lord, the Bible says he will give you the desires of your heart. Meaning God will provide what you will desire. God will put some desires in you. Desires that are lined up with his will. That are lined up with the purpose of your birth. Verse 5 says, then because God already has given you desires and God, then verse 5 says, then commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Why? Because he's the one who has given you the desires. He will see to it that, that if you follow it through, it is fulfilled. Let me read it, verse 4 and 5 of Psalm 37. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Verse 5, commit your ways to the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Proverbs chapter 69 and then we go to 3. It says, verse 9 says, a man's heart plans way, a man's heart plans his way. Everybody will be planning ways. The heart of man has got a lot of plans. And the, the Bible says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his path. And the Lord directs his steps. Man's heart plans his way. Why? Because the Lord has given you the desires of your heart. Why? Because you delight yourself in him. A man's heart Plans his way, not ways. Plans his way. Because if it is ways, you may not be able to prioritize carefully. God has a way for you. And he gives you the, the desires that will line up with his way. And, and, and then your heart will plan your way. Will strategize around the way that God has given to you because He has given it to you, it's yours. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Then verse 3 says, Commit your words to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. You will be firm, you will not be doubtful. Your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts will be established. You remember the Bible says, as, as he is, as, as a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. So your thoughts will be established. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And verse 6 says, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. In this life, for you to be successful, God must direct your path. But you must acknowledge him. You must trust him with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God. Acknowledge that God is the one behind your heart's desire. And then, if you acknowledge him, if you acknowledge the power of God, if you acknowledge what God has done for you, and if you acknowledge that God is fully a part of your path, is full a part, full a part, is fully a part of what you your endeavors are, he will guide you. The Bible says you will become the director of your paths. Every step you take now, either takes you forward or backward. Every step that you take now, either that step will take you forward or backward. One of the greatest mishap that can ever happen to a man is to lack an idea of where he is going and how to get there. That is a tragedy. When you end up not knowing where you are going and where, how to get where you want to go. Many have rushed into certain open doors only to discover that those doors were traps in disguise. 
Many people have rushed because they hear that there is an opportunity. And many of the people, and Christians, of course, inclusive, have rushed into certain open doors only to discover later that those doors were traps in disguise. Others have been deceived by the glitter of certain business propositions. And they have come to realize that not all that glitters is gold. Because when people present, present to you propose business propositions, it sounds so, so attractive. So others have, de have, have been deceived by the glitter of certain business propositions. And have come to realize far later that not all that glitters is gold. Flattery words can make you buy into something that you will discover later that it is a disguise. So you really, really greatly need God to order your steps. Definitely, you, you really, it is imperative, you really, really need God to, and I'm telling you greatly so, need God to order your steps. The decisions we make in life are based on our assessment. As human beings, decisions that we made in most cases are based on our assessment which may not be absolutely correct. Everything may seem right and may appear satisfactory to human eyes, but at the end of it, it may bring frustration, stagnation, and untimely death. Because you are simply human. Your steps need to be guided by God. Because if you depend on your ability as a human, you've got a lot of imperfections that may make you make wrong decisions. That is why we need to be able to hear the voice of God and allow God to lead and guide and direct our steps and order our steps and give instructions to steps that we must take. Two scriptures in the Bible, in the Bible that I think are emphasizing something very important about human frail. Two scriptures in the Bible. Let's go to Proverbs. The basic repeat of the same statement appears in these two uh, proverbs that we're going to read. The first proverb is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. It says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. This way seems, seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. That is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. It says, the way of a, the way, I mean, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Now listen, the basic of the Proverbs 16.25 this time. It says, There is a way that seems right to men. You see, it's similar. There is a way that seems right to men, but its end is the way of death. Man, even at his best mental state, is incapable of making reliable, durable decisions. I say man, even at his best mental state, is incapable of making reliable, durable decisions. We can't make durable and reliable decisions. Because by nature we are frail. After, after the sin of mankind, we became frail. So we can't even trust our own decisions. His colleagues, a man's colleagues, his colleagues may even approve his ideas which seems right by their assessment, but at the end, the way thereof may still be death. This is a lesson that is designed to save us unnecessary headaches and delays. Because if we will trust God's guidance, we may not have to go through a lot of headaches and unnecessary pains. No human effort can match God's direction. I'm telling you, no human's, human effort can match God's direction. God is precise, is exact. 
He knows the future. And he knows how you can be able to assume that future and enjoy it. Understand that you are limited as a human being. And if you can understand that you are, you, you, you are, you are limited as a human being, you will be able to trust more on God's guidance. Understand that you are limited as a human being, which is why you will always need God's guidance. Because you are, you are limited. You are limited. You will forever need the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you. You will forever need to hear from heaven so that every step you take is a step that God has instructed you to take. It's a step that is ordered by the Lord. God's thoughts on any issue of life is a higher. Therefore, allow him to order your steps. My pardon, pardon me. Allow God to order your step. You know why? Because God's step in every issue of life is higher. Not just higher, higher. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 says, My thoughts, God speaking, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, God speaking. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways, your ways, or your ways, my ways, says the Lord. And Jeremiah, uh, verse 29, verse 11 says, I know the thought is God took it. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Those are God's thoughts, are higher than man's thoughts. So if you want the best out of this life, allow God to, to lead you and to guide you and to order your step. Your steps need to be ordered divinely by God because misdirection can lead to many years of setbacks and can even wipe out your destiny. Can even wipe out your destiny. Steps, your steps, your steps must be ordered divinely by God because misdirection can lead to many years of setbacks and can even wipe out your destiny relocating a place you know the people who, relo who will relocate places of worship because they feel if they can go to another church another place of worship things will be different and they will they will begin to assume success uh, that, that 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 is beyond imagine imagine that cannot be imagined but listen to this carefully. Locating, relocating a place of worship, moving from one province to another, changing jobs and your career, changing status of being an employee to being an entrepreneur, divorcing or remarrying, moving from one boy or girlfriend to another is not the answer. A sure way is to allow God to order your steps. May I repeat this, this statement? Relocating a place of worship, moving from one province to another, changing jobs and your career, changing status of being an employee to being an entrepreneur, divorcing or remarrying, moving from one boy or girlfriend to another is not the answer. But a sure way of making it in this life is by allowing God to order your step. The answer is in God. It's not in all these changes that we make in our lives. It is not in all this. Our success is, is allowing God to order our step. However, I trust that as we travel together in this lesson, God will instruct and guide us along definite lines. You know, we are getting into a teaching that I believe if we put our ears to the ground and we we'll listen to the teaching of God's word and we we'll follow God's word, we will never go wrong. We will never go wrong. Because I believe it will take God to lead us, to guide us, to order our steps for us to be able to assume exactly what God wants us to be doing. And we will be able to assume God's plan for our lives and God's plans, as the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, as the, book says, as the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, that God has better thoughts for us. Not thoughts of evil, but thoughts that give you hope. Thoughts that have a great future. God will open 
God will open your ear to hear his direction on issues that had confused you and me for the past years. Issues that you could not handle. God will begin to open ears for us if we allow ourselves and we submit ourselves to him so that God can be able to lead and guide us and order our steps. It is very important for you to allow God to guide you, to lead you. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 11, God will lead you continuously. God wants to be a part of all the details of your life. He wants to guide you. He wants to lead you. If you allow God to lead you, you will locate God's master plan for your life. You will locate God's master plan. For, and it is never late. It is never late for you to, to, to expose yourself vulnerably to God's guidance. And if you do so, you will never go wrong. From henceforth to the last day of your life or the last second of your life, you will be doing well. You will be directed and ordered by God in everything you do. And you will assume so many exploits that you never ever thought you can ever assume in your life. God, God, God is ready to guide us. He's ready to lead us. He has made available Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can also be able to tell you things to come. He can remind you of things that are necessary for the present and the future so that you can be able to approach your future with no doubts in your heart. We need to allow God to guide and to lead us. Let it be God who will order the steps, the steps that we take. Enclosure. This is purely an introduction that's supposed to lead us into greener pastures. Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. So that when we get into the depth of this teaching, our heart is prepared to be led and to be guided by God. No, it will never end. This series will never end and leave you the same way it found you. But it will expose you to the guidance of God himself. God will ensure that he leads you. He will ensure that he guides your step. He needs your cooperation. If I cooperate with God, if you cooperate with God, both of us will never go wrong in everything we do. Notwithstanding the present situation. Notwithstanding the future that comes with all adverse circumstances, you will always break through and you will always be a winner. Why? It's because you have allowed yourself to be led, to be guided by God. And if God guides you, if God leads you, there is no way you can go wrong. But the way your way seems right, and your ways will seem right, but it's not guaranteed that it will you lead you to greener pastures. Your ways may seem right to you, but it has no guarantee. Because why? Man by nature is frail. Man's heart plan, plan his way, but it is God who directs his step. It has to be God who directs the step. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. Who will bring it to pass? It's God. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. And the Lord delights in them. Why? Because he's the one who has ordered it. He will delight in your way. And though you fall, you will never be utterly down. You will never be utterly cast down. Why? Because God will uphold you, will support you with his right hand. David says, I have been young in closure. And now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous. Why? Forsaken. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Why? Because God is ordering their steps. I declare that forever God will order your step. I declare that your spirit is going to be, to be sharpened and God's voice will be clear. His guidance, his direction will be clear. For you to make it, you need God to be a part of your life. 
I just want to open up an opportunity to pray for people who really, really need Jesus in their lives. If you're not born again, let me tell you, unless God is a part of your life, unless God is a part of your life, you will never know what next step you should take. You will be vulnerable. Vulnerable to all the schemes that are around that has derailed a lot of people and brought a lot of heart, heart aches in people's lives. But I believe that today, if you commit your life to God, things will turn around. Your life, for the first time, you will, you will have a life that is guaranteed. Because it is God who can be able to guarantee us a good future. So I want to pray for those who say, today, I want to submit my life to Jesus. If you are here and you are saying, Lord, here am I. I want to be your child. I want to be born again. I want to be part of your kingdom. I want you, Lord, to lead me and to guide every step I take. I'm telling you, God will do exactly that. May you please kindly say and humbly say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, today I submit my life to you. From henceforth, Lord God, my life belongs to you. Lord, I'm standing before you and I repent from all my sins. Forgive me, Lord God, of all my sins in Jesus' name. I believe that from now on, my sins are cleansed because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. From today, I'm born again. I'm your child. I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. I am beginning to see new things. I am saved. Oh God, give me the hunger to read the Bible and to meet and fellowship with other God-fearing Christians. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. If you have made this prayer from today, you are born again, you are a child of God. It has absolutely nothing to do with feelings. It had all to do with what God orders us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him, God always wanted your faith. He wanted you to stretch your faith and believe in him. And from there, you will be given the right to become a child of God. So from today, because of this prayer, you are a child of God. May I pray for you? I want to pray for all of us, all of us. You know what is going to be the prayer? That God must sharpen our sensitivity. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you have sent the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can be able to lead us, to guide us, to be a part of our lives, Lord God, to live this life together with us so that, Lord God, when we do exploit, when we do exploit in faith, we will have the confidence and the assurance of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, I'm praying for every person who has access to this material that that Lord God, his spirit or her spirit will be sharpened and he will hear the voice of God clear. He will not hear or she will not hear the voice of a stranger, but she will be guided and led by you that every step that they will take or I will take, Lord God, will be steps that are guided by you in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, the intensity and the intimacy of a great relationship with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, and I come against every voice of the enemy in Jesus' name that none of those who are under this prayer Lord God will be a susceptible Lord God, Lord God to and vulnerable Lord God to the voice and the guidance of the enemy in Jesus name I thank you father in the name of Jesus Christ that your sons moving forward Lord God their spiritual sensitivity is sharpened and they will be able to hear every voice and every instruction that comes from you and every single step that we and all of us will take Lord God will be ordered by you in Jesus mighty name amen if you make this prayer from henceforth your steps will be ordered by god and the voice of the enemy strange voices will never guide you let us do our profession and close our session in a word of prayer i'm looking forward to tomorrow when we now begin to get into the deep details of this lesson one two three i found first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all 
all these things are added to me. I believe in Jesus Christ and signs and wonders are following me. Surely, goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Hey, God bless you. See you tomorrow and enjoy all this teaching. And for health, please use the material that is already posted on this platform in Jesus' mighty name so that you can enjoy your full health and also enjoy all the available remedies that comes through the healing in Jesus' name. Amen.